Hello everyone and welcome back to the X-Ring. I hope you're doing well today and having a great week. What we're going to do today is talk about high angle shots and how you get it solved using your Kestrel or how you shoot these type of shots. So stick around. Okay, so before we get started, big shout out to Big Ivy Silas Branch for allowing me to do this demo out here. Uh, this is actually where I teach my classes, just got done with the class, and this is one of the things we actually teach in the class. So it's really hard to find a place where you can achieve a true high angle shot. Whether you're shooting at GTI Legion and shooting off the towers, you just don't have the distance. You might have the angle if you're shooting straight down at the base of it, but you just don't have the distance to see where it's really going to make you miss the target. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Daniel Defense here, and I haven't shot any rounds on the target. I'm going to do this fresh to show you guys um, what happens when you shoot high angle shots. What you need to remember is on a high angle, and what I consider high angle is anything more than 15 degrees that you really need to kind of solve for when you're getting out there some kind of distance, you know, five, six, seven hundred yards, you're always going to miss high or you're going to have higher impacts. It doesn't matter if it's on a decline or if it's on an incline, you're always going to shoot high. So you have to adjust for that. You might say, wait a minute, this is working with gravity and this is working against gravity. Wouldn't they be different? And that's not the case, okay? It's not the case at all. What we're doing is, I have a target down there and I'm filming right now through the Allen. That target, if you take your laser range finder and you hit that target, what we're gonna see, and it's a third IPSC, is it measured out at 819 yards, roughly 820 yards. So, so from here on top of the mountain, if we are shooting down to the target here, yes, we do have 820 yards. But what we're looking at is the horizontal distance. So if I were to able, if I were able to draw a laser straight up from that target and then go horizontally this way and shoot the distance, it's going to be less than 820 yards. The same thing for the incline shot. And that number is not going to be substantial, substantially different, but it's still going to be in the 700s. Okay, I think it's about 780-ish or something like that. It's enough to make quite of a difference, somewhere about half a mil hold or so, somewhere in there, just roughly guessing. So the other thing you have to remember is the bullet is truly traveling the distance of the 820 yards. So whatever wind you have, you do have to factor for that wind, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Kestrel. Big shout out to Kestrel Ballistics uh, for supporting the channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. I do know that this Daniel Defense rifle, which is equipped with a Black Hound optic, I'm just trying it out for a review for later on down the road. Uh, we do have it outfitted with the Area 419, the Maverick. And I haven't shot around at the target down there at the bottom. Any impacts you see would be from the students in the school. But what we're going to do is I know that this rifle, the 6 Creedmoor, is dialed in for this Burger ammunition, okay? This is uh, 6mm Creedmoor 109 grain long range hybrid target. You guys can see that I paid too much for that, right? So basically what we're going to do is it's a 109 grainer and we're going to take this brand new box and we are actually going to take, I'll take four rounds. And the plan here is to shoot two rounds utilizing no dope whatsoever as far as taking into account the angle. And we'll see what the Kestrel says. So we're going to turn the Kestrel on. I do know that this is true to this rifle because we did it during the school today. And at 820 yards, it is telling me that I need to be holding 5.3 mils. Okay. You guys might be able to see that. I'll give you an up close here on a second with the phone, but the phone's occupied by the scope over there. So we're going to go 5.3 mils. Now, normally on a horizontal shot, it would be dead on. If I could go straight across the mountain here at 820 yards, I know that this rifle is going to hit it. This thing just shoots lights out with that ammunition. It loves it. It's been a great rifle. So I'm going to take the shot. Now, knowing what I know, Knowing what I'm telling you, it should miss high based on what the Kestrel is telling me because it thinks it's a horizontal shot. So let me go ahead and get some ears in because I don't have a lot of baffles on the, uh, the actual Maverick itself. And what we're going to do is I will insert this in here. I don't even know if this... That's good enough. I'll make it work. 
I'm going to aim dead center of this third ipsic. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on the camera so you guys can see this a little closer and we'll see if it does truly indeed miss high or not. All right, so we have the island recording. What we're gonna do is go ahead and get on this at 5.3. Let's see if I see any wind or, if I had to guess, it's probably gonna be a left or right wind. So I'm gonna hold just a hair left. I'm gonna hold dead center of this third Ipsic. Here we go. Directly over the top of the target, 12 o'clock. Hopefully the resolution is good enough where you guys can see this. Let's see if we can repeat it. Same thing, just over the top. Now, what we're going to do, and you guys might say, well, how are you solving for the, solving for the angle? You can do that with your Strelock app. Most of your laser range finders will have some kind of degree of inclination or declination. And so if we look here and we hit it, we are at 19 degrees minus, negative 19 degrees. That's what it shows me in the SIGs. Okay, so you lased your target, it shows 820 yards, and if you dial the 5.28 or 5.3 mils, I'm telling you, you are gonna miss over the top. So what you do is you go over to your target card, and when you do this, you'll see target range 820 yards. Our direction of fire is 7 degrees. Our degrees, our inclination or declination, is actually going to be here. You have a plus zero, that's where it should normally reside. But as we go down, you're going to go to minus 19 because we saw that angle on the SIG binos. If we go down again, you will see your cosine angle, which will be a 0.946. Target speed, we're not going to mess with any of that. We're just going to exit out. We'll show you that at a little later time. Now, if you'll see, the numbers for the elevation, they've changed to 4.9 mils. So you have to take note of that. That's dropping almost four full tenths, and that's enough to miss at this kind of distance. So it's dropped quite a bit, about four tenths. That's probably going to be the difference. So one, two, three, four, 4. 4.9 mils. Same shot, same hold, here we go. That's a dead center impact, let's do another one. And that's two for two. Now, if you wanted to know what the true horizontal distance is at this 19 degree angle, you can simply take your yardage until this actually meets up. But the first thing you need to do is take out your angle. If we go up to zero and exit, now what you're going to see is, what do we have to do to get 4.9? I think it's somewhere around 480 something or 780 yards or so. Let's see, 783. There it is, 4.9 mils. So while that not, might not seem much, it is almost 40 yards. And 40 yards doesn't matter if you're taking a 100-yard shot. But when you're shooting something that's 820 yards, 40 yards matters. You can see it does make a difference in four-tenths. So what we can do now is we are going to change this back to seven, 820 yards. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit the target again. And let's see what happens when we go positive or uphill. We're going to go plus 19, pretend it's an upslope shot. We're going to exit, and look at that, 4.9. Now, it changed a little bit with the 4.94, but it is still the 4.9 mils. All right, so to take it a step further, we are here at Big Ivy. And right there on the mountain, there is a target at 1,100 yards. Now, it is a full-size Ipsic but it is once again about 19 to 20 degrees upslope. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, put it into the Kestrel, go ahead and find out the degrees and see if we can make an impact on that. And I'll get the spotter set up for you guys. All right, so that you guys can see the true angle here, I'm gonna take a round and we were shooting up on top of that mountain up there, all the way at the peak, right in there, that's 1100. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this video, this camera around uh, so that we don't see that there's any cheating or anything. It's, wait. It is 1935, 1935. So what I'm gonna do is stop, turn the camera around, and I'm gonna pick up right here. Okay, so 1935 still, I'll show you the clock. Uh, here's the target, let me go ahead and zoom in. And we are on a steep angle, let me go ahead and chamber around. All right, this is standing off the tripod. Here we go. Oh, I might, I might have pulled that. Oh, that was an impact. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick this up. So you guys can see that that was real time and 1936. There we go. So it is definitely doable, and the Kestrel is an unbelievable piece of uh, machinery that will help you get first-round impacts. So the key takeaway here is make sure it's always on zero unless you have some kind of angle shot. And you're going to need a long-distance shot in order to be able to replicate this. This is why I like Big Ivy is because we can do these shots. What you need to remember is you already know this from high school. You learned it a long time ago. It was the Pythagoras theorem, and it was the C-squared equals a squared plus b squared. So if you're at the top of the mountain and you laze this target way down here at 820 yards, that's the hypotenuse of the long leg. We don't know the vertical height of the mountain, although that could be calculated to the target. But what we need to know is this horizontal distance. And that horizontal distance, if you measured it, would equal somewhere around 780 yards. So hopefully you guys learned about high angle shots and how to solve for them using your Kestrel. Always remember to zero it out. Big shout out to Kestrel, Big Ivy, and then also my Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you and thank you for all of those that have come forward to support the channel. Hope to bring you great content like this in the future. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great one.